Work by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England. What are we set on earth for? Say to toil, nor seek to leave thy tending of the vines for all the heat of the day till it declines and death's mild curfew shall from work a soil god did anoint thee with his odorous oil to wrestle not to reign and he assigns all thy tears over like pure crystallines for younger fellow workers of the soil to wear for amulets so others shall take patience labour to their heart and hand from thy hand and thy heart and thy brave cheer and god's grace fruitify through thee to all the least flower with a brimming cup may stand and share its dewdrop with another near end of poem this recording is in the public domain Comfort by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England O oh, speak low to me, my Saviour, low and sweet from out the hallelujahs, sweet and low, lest I should fear and fall and miss thee so, who art not missed by any that entreat, speak to me as to mary at thy feet and if no precious gums my hands bestow let my tears drop like amber while i go in search of thy divinest voice complete in humanest affection thus in sooth to lose the sense of losing as a child whose songbird seeks the wood for evermore is sung to in its stead by mother's mouth till sinking on her breast love reconciled he sleeps the faster that he wept before end of poem this recording is in the public domain consolation by elizabeth barrett browning Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas. Consolation. All are not taken. There are left behind living beloveds, tender looks to bring, and make the daylight still a happy thing, and tender voices to make soft the wind. But if it were not so, if I could find no love in all the world for comforting, nor any path but hollowly did ring, where dust to dust the love from life disjoined, and if before those sepulchres unmoving I stood alone, as some forsaken lamb goes bleating up the moors in weary dearth, crying, Where are ye, O my loved and loving? I know a voice would sound, Daughter, I am. Can I suffice for heaven and not for earth? End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Irreparableness by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Elaine Conway, England I have been in the meadows all the day And gathered there the nosegay that you see Singing within myself as bird or bee When such do field work on a morn of May But now I look upon my flowers Decay hath met them in my hands, More fatally because more warmly clasped, And sobs are free to come instead of songs. What do you say, sweet counsellors, dear friends, That I should go back straightway to the fields and gather more? Another sooth may do it, but not I. My heart is very tired. My strength is low, my hands are full of blossoms plucked before, how dead within them till myself shall die. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
tears by elizabeth barrett browning read for LibriVox .org by elaine conway england thank god bless god all ye who suffer not more grief than ye can weep for that is well that is light grieving lighter none befell since adam forfeited the primal lot tears what are tears the babe weeps in its cot the mother singing at a marriage bell the bride weeps and before the oracle of high feigned hills the poet hath forgot that moisture on his cheeks thank god for grace whoever weeps albeit as some have gone ye grope tear blinded in a desert place and touch but tombs look up those tears will run soon in long rivers down the lifted face and leave the vision clear for stars and sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain grief by elizabeth barrett browning read for librivox dot org by elaine conway england i tell you hopeless grief is passionless that only men incredulous of despair half taught in anguish through the midnight air beat upward to god's throne in loud access of shrieking and reproach full desertness in souls as countries leaf silent bare under the blanching vertical eye glare of the absolute heavens departed man express grief for thy dead in silence like to death most like a monumental statue set in everlasting watch and moveless woe till itself crumble to the dust beneath touch it the marble eyelids are not wet if it could weep it could arise and go end of poem this recording is in the public domain patience taught by nature by elizabeth barrett browning read for librivox dot org by christine g o oh, dreary life we cry o oh, dreary life and still the generations of the birds sing through our sighing and the flocks and herds serenely live while we are keeping strife with heaven's true purpose in us as a knife against which we may struggle ocean girds unslackened the dry lands savannah swords unwary sweep hills watch unworn the rife meek leaves drop yearly from the forest trees to show above the unwasted stars that pass in their old glory o thou god of old grant me some smaller grace that comes to these but so much patience as a blade of grass grows by contented through the heat and cold end of poem this recording is in the public domain Cheerfulness Taught by Reason by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas Cheerfulness Taught by Reason I think we are too ready with complaint in this fair world of gods. Had we no hope, indeed, beyond the zenith and the slope, of yon grey blank of sky, we might be faint, to muse upon eternity's constraint round our aspirant souls. But since the scope must widen early, is it well to droop for a few days consumed in loss and taint? a pusillanimous heart be comforted and like a cheerful traveller take the road singing beside the hedge what if the bread be bitter in thine inn and thou unshod to meet the flints at least it may be said because the way is short i thank thee god end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain
De Profundis by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Read for LibriVox.org by Fano Jahangiri. De Profundis. The face which duly as the sun rose up for me with life begun to mark all bright hours of the day with hourly love is deemed the way and yet my days go on go on the tongue which like a stream could run smooth music from the roughest stone and every morning with good day made each day good is hushed away and yet my days go on go on the heart which like a staff was one for mine to lean and rest upon the strongest on the longest day with a steadfast love is caught away and yet my days go on go on and cold before my summer's done and deaf in nature's general tune and fallen too low for a special fear and here with hope no longer here while the tears drop my days go on the world goes whispering to its own this anguish pierces to the bone and tender friends go sighing round what love can ever cure this wound my days go on my days go on the past rolls forward on the sun and makes all night all dreams begun not to be ended and that bliss and life that will not end in this my days go on my days go on breath freezes on my lips to moan as one alone once not alone i sit and knock at nature's door heart bare heart hungry very poor whose desolated days go on i knock and cry undone undone is there no help no comfort none no gleaning in the white wheat plains where others drive their loaded veins my vacant days go on go on this nature though the snows be down thinks kindly of the bird of june the little red hip on the tree is ripe for such what is for me whose days so winterly go on no bird am i to sing in june and dare not ask an equal boom goodness and berries red are natures to give away to better creatures and yet my days go on go on i ask less kindness to be done only to lose this pilgrim shoon too early worn and grim with sweet cool deathly touch to these tired feet till days go out which now go on only to lift the turf on moan from off the earth where it has grown some cupid space and say behold creeping poor heart beneath this fold forgetting how the days go on what harm would that do green and on the sword could quicken overshone by skies as blue and crickets might have leave to chirp there day and night while my new rest went on went on from gracious nature have i won such liberal bounty may i run so lizard like within her side and there be safe who now am tried by days that painfully go on a voice reproves me thereupon more sweet than nature's when the drone of bees is sweetest and more deep than when the rivers overleap the shuddering pines and thunder on god's voice not nature's night and noon he sits upon the great white throne and listens for the creature's praise but babble we of days and days the day spring he whose days go on he reigns above he reigns alone systems burn out and leave his throne where mists of seraphs melt and fall around him changeless amid all ancient of days whose days go on he reigns below he reigns alone and having life in love forgone beneath the crown of sovereign thorns 
He reigns the jealous God who mourns or rules with him while days go on. By anguish which made pale the sun, I hear him charge his saints that none among his creatures anywhere blaspheme against him with despair, however darkly days go on. Take from my head the thorn wreathed brow, no mortal grief deserves the crown. O supreme love, chief misery, the sharp regalia are for thee, whose days eternally go on. For us, whatever's undergone, thou knowest, willest what is done. Grief may be joy misunderstood, only the good discerns the good. I trust thee while my days go on. Whatever's lost, it first was won. We will not struggle nor impugn. Perhaps the cup was broken here, that heaven's new wine might show more clear. I praise thee while my days go on. I praise thee while my days go on. I love thee while my days go on. Through dark and dearth, through fire and frost, with empty arms and treasure lost, I thank thee while my days go on. And having in thy life depth thrown, being and suffering which are one, as a child drops his pebbled small, down some deep well and hears it fall smiling so i thy days go on end of poem this recording is in the public domain loved once by elizabeth barrett browning read for librivox.org by fano jahangiri I clasped, appraising once, Earth's lamentable sounds, The valaday, the jarring yea and nay, The fall of kisses on answering clay, The soft farewell, the welcome mournful air, But all did leave in the air. With a less bitter leaven of sore despair Than these words I loved once. And who saith I loved once? not angels whose clear eyes love love foresee love through eternity who by to love to apprehend to be not god called love his noble crown name casting a light too broad for blasting the great god changing not from everlasting says never i loved once nor ever the loved ones Dost thou say, victim Christ, misprized friend, the cross and curse may rend, but having loved, thou lovest to the end? It is man's saying, man's, too weak to move, one sphered star above. Man desecrates the eternal Godward love with his no more and once. How say ye, we loved once, blasphemers? Is your earth not colder now, mourners without that snow? Our friends, and would ye wrong each other so? And could ye say of some whose love is known, whose prayers have met your own, whose tears have fallen for you, whose smiles have shown such words, we loved them once? Could ye, we loved her once, say come of me, sweet friends, when out of sight? When hearts of better right stand in between me and your happy light, and when, as flowers kept too long in the shade, ye find my colors fade, and all that is not love in me decayed, such words ye loved me once, could ye be loved her once, say cold of me when further put away in earth's sepulchral clay, when mute the lips which deprecate today, not so, not then, least then, when life is shriven, and death's full joy is given, of those who sit and love you up in heaven, say not, we loved them once. Say never, ye loved once, God is too near above the grave below, and all our moments go, too quickly past our souls for saying so, 
the mysteries of love and death avenge affection's light of range there comes no change to justify the change whatever comes loved ones and yet that word of once is humanly acceptive kings have said shaking a discrowned head we ruled once dotards we once taught and led cripples once danced in the vines and bards approved were once by scornings moved but love strikes one hour love those never loved who dream that they loved once end of poem this recording is in the public domain My Kate by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Fernando Jangi She was not as pretty as women I know And yet all your best made of sunshine and snow Drop to shade, melt to naught in the long-trodden ways While she's still remembered on warm and cold days, my Kate Her air had a meaning, her movements a grace You turned from the fairest to gaze on a face and when you had once seen her forehead and mouth you saw as distinctly her soul and her truth my kate such a blue inner light from her eyelids outbroke you looked at her silence and her fancied she spoke when she did so peculiar yet soft was the tone though the loudest spoke also you heard her alone my kate i doubt if she said to you much that could act as a thought or suggestion she did not attract in the sense of the brilliant or wise i infer it was her thinking of others made you think of her my kate she never found fault with you never implied you wrong by her right and yet men at her side grew nobler girls purer as through the whole town the children were gladder that pulled at her gown my kate none knelt at her feet confessed lovers in thrall they knelt more to god than they used that was all if you praised her as charming some asked what you meant but the charm of her presence was felt when she went my kate the weak and the gentle the ribald and rude she took as you found them and did them all good it always was so with her see what you have she has made the grass greener even here with her grave my kate my dear one when thou wast alive with the rest i held thee the sweetest and loved thee the best and now thou art dead shall i not take thy part as thy smiles used to do for thyself my sweetheart my kate end of poem this recording is in the public domain a false step by elizabeth barrett browning read for LibriVox.org by fano jahangiri sweet thou hast trod on a heart pass there's a world full of men and women as fair as thou art must do such things now and then thou only hast stepped unaware malice not one can impute and why should a heart have been there in a way of a fair woman's foot it was not a stone that could trip nor was it a thorn that could rend put up thy proud under lip it was merely the heart of a friend and yet peradventure one day thou sitting alone at the glass Remarking the bloom gone away, with a smile in its implement was, and seeking round thee in vain from hundreds who flattered before, such a word as, oh, not in the main, do I hold thee less precious but more. Doubt, sigh very like, and thy part. Of all I have known or can know, I wish I had only that heart I trod upon ages ago. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Lover's Sonnet by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. 
i love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends of being an ideal grace i love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight i love thee freely as men strive for right i love thee purely as they turn from praise i love thee with the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith i love thee with a love i seem to lose with my lost saints i love thee with the breath smiles tears of all my life and if god choose i shall but love thee better after death end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain A Portrait by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. I will paint her as I see her Ten times have the lilies blown Since she looked upon the sun And her face is lily-clear Lily-shaped and drooped in duty To the law of its own beauty Oval cheeks and coloured faintly, which a trail of golden hair keeps from fading off to air, and a forehead fair and saintly, which two blue eyes undershine like meek prayers before a shrine, face and figure of a child, though too calm you think and tender for the childhood you would lend her. Yet, child, simple undefiled frank obedient waiting still on the turnings of your will moving light as all young things as young birds or early wheat when the wind blows over it only free from flutterings of loud mirth that scorneth measure taking love for her chief pleasure choosing pleasures for the rest which come softly just as she, when she nestles at your knee. Quiet talk she liketh best, in a bower of gentle looks, watering flowers, or reading books. And her voice it murmurs lowly, as a silver stream may run, which yet feels, you feel, the sun. And her smile it seems half holy, as if drawn from thoughts more far than our common jestings are. And if any poet knew her, he would sing of her with falls, used in lovely madrigals. And if any painter drew her, he would paint her unaware, with a halo round her hair. And if reader read the poem, he would whisper, You have done a consecrated little Una. And a dreamer, did you show him, that same picture would exclaim, "'Tis my angel with a name. And a stranger, when he sees her, in the street even, smileth stilly, just as you would at a lily. And all voices that address her, soften, sleek in every word, as if speaking to a bird. And all fancies yearn to cover the hard earth whereon she passes, with the thymy scented grasses. And all hearts do pray, God love her, I and certes in good sooth, we may all be sure he doth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Mask by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. 1. I have a smiling face, she said, I have a jest for all I meet, I have a garland for my head, And all its flowers are sweet, And so you call me gay, she said. 2. Grief taught me this smile, she said, and wrong did teach this jesting bold these flowers were plucked from garden bed while a death chime was told and what now will you say she said three behind no prison grate she said which slurs the sunshine half a mile are captives so uncomforted as souls behind a smile 
god's pity let us pray she said four i know my face is bright she said such brightness dying suns diffuse i bear upon my forehead shed the signs of what i lose the ending of my day she said five if i dared leave this smile she said and take a moan upon my mouth and tie a cypress round my head and let my tears run smooth it were the happier way she said six and since that must not be she said i fain your bitter world would leave how calmly calmly smile the dead who do not therefore grieve the yea of heaven is yea she said seven but in your bitter world she said face joys a costly mask to wear and bought with pangs long nourished and rounded to despair grief's earnest makes life's play she said end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Child's Thought of God by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas They say that God lives very high, but if you look above the pines, you cannot see our God, and why? And if you dig down in the mines, you never see him in the gold, though from him all that's glory shines. God is so good, he wears a fold of heaven and earth across his face, like secrets kept for love untold but still I feel that his embrace slides down by thrills through all things made, through sight and sound of every place, as if my tender mother laid on my shut lids her kisses pressure, half waking me at night, and said, Who kissed you through the dark, dear guesser? End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Best Thing in the World by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. What's the best thing in the world? June rose by May dew impearled. Sweet south wind that means no rain. Truth not cruel to a friend. Pleasure not in haste to end. Beauty not self decked and curled, till its pride is over plain light that never makes you wink memory that gives no pain love when so you're loved again what's the best thing in the world something out of it i think end of poem this recording is in the public domain the ladies yes by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. Yes, I answered you last night. No, this morning, sir, I say, colours seen by candlelight will not look the same by day. When the vials played their best, lamps above and laughs below, love me sounded like a jest fit for yes or fit for no call me false or call me free thou whatever light may shine no man on your face shall see any grief for change on mine yet the sin is on us both time to dance is not to woo woo a light makes fickle troth scorn of me recoils on you learn to win a lady's faith nobly as the thing is high bravely as for life and death with a loyal gravity lead her from the festive boards point her to the starry skies guard her by your truthful words pure from courtship's flatteries by your truth she shall be true ever true as wives of yore and her yes once said to you shall be yes for evermore End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Truth by Elizabeth Barrett Browning 
Recorded for LibriVox.org by Beth Thomas. Earth outgrows the mythic fancies sung beside her in her youth, and those debonair romances sound but dull beside the truth. Phoebus's chariot course is run. Look up, poets, to the sun. Christ hath sent us down the angels, and the whole earth and the skies are illumined by altar candles lit for blessed mysteries, and a priest's hand through creation waveth calm and consecration. Truth is fair, should we forego it? Can we sigh right for a wrong? God himself is the best poet, and the real is his song. Sing his truth out fair and full, and secure his beautiful truth is large our aspiration scarce embraces half we be shame to stand in his creation and doubt truth's sufficiency to think god's song unexcelling the poor tales of our own telling what is true and just and honest what is lovely what is pure all of praise that hath admonished all of virtue shall endure these are themes for poets uses stirring nobler than the muses o oh, brave poets keep back nothing nor mix falsehood with the whole look up godward speak the truth in worthy song from earnest soul hold in high poetic duty truest truth the fairest beauty end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain a changed world by elizabeth barrett browning Read for LibriVox by Fano Jahangir. The face of all the world is changed, I think, since first I heard the footstep of thy soul move still, oh, still beside me as they stole betwixt me and the dreadful outer brink of obvious death, where I, who thought to sing, was caught up into love and taught the whole of life in a new rhythm. The cup of dole God gave for baptism, I am fain to drink, and praise its sweetness sweet with thee and near. The names of country, heaven, are changed away, for where thou art or shall be, there or here, in this, this lute and song, loved yesterday, the singing angels know are only dear, because thy name moves right in what they say. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Love by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox by Farno Jahangiri Love, mere love, is beautiful indeed And worthy of acceptation Fire is bright Let temple burn or flax An equal light leaps in the flame From cedar plank or weed and love is fire, and when I say at need, I love thee, mark, I love thee in thy sight, I stand transfigured, glorified, aright, with conscience of the new rays that proceed out of my face toward thine. There is nothing low in love when love the lowest, meanest creatures who love God, God accepts while loving so. And what I feel across the inferior features of what I am doth flash itself and show how that great work of love enhances natures. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Prospect by Elizabeth Barrett Browning Read for LibriVox.org by Pano Jahangiri Methinks we do as fretful children do, leaning their faces on the window pane, to sigh the glass dim with their own breath stain, and shut the sky and landscape from their view. And thus, alas, since God the Maker drew a mystic separation twixt those twain, the life beyond us and our souls in pain, we miss the prospect which we're called unto, by grief we're fools to use. Be still and strong, O man, my brother, hold thy sobbing breath, and keep thy soul's large window pure from wrong, that so, as life's appointment issueth, thy vision may be clear to watch along the sunset consummation lights of death. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
only a curl by elizabeth barrett browning read for LibriVox.org by christine g one friends of faces unknown and a land unvisited over the sea who tell me how lonely you stand with a single gold curl in the hand held up to be looked at by me two while you ask me to ponder and say what a father and mother can do with the bright fellow locks put away out of reach beyond kiss in the clay where the violets press nearer than you three shall i speak like a poet or run into weak woman's tears for relief o oh, children i never lost one yet my arms round my own little son and love knows the secret of grief four and i feel what it must be and is when god draws a new angel so through the house of a man up to his with a murmur of music you miss and a rapture of light you forgo five how you think staring on at the door where the face of your angel flashed in that its brightness familiar before burns off from you ever the more for the dark of your sorrow and sin six god lent him and takes him you sigh nay there let me break with your pain god's generous in giving say i and the thing which he gives i deny that he ever can take back again seven he gives what he gives to give means with god not to tempt or deceive with a cup thrust in benjamin's sack eight he gives what he gives be content he resumes nothing given be sure god lends whether you sir is lent in his temple indignant he went and scourged away all those impure nine he lends not but gives to the end as he loves to the end if it seem that he draws back a gift comprehend tis to add to it rather amend and finish it up to your dream ten or keep as a mother may toys too costly though given by herself till the room shall be stiller from noise and the children more fit for such joys kept over their heads on the shelf eleven so look up friends you who indeed have possessed in your house a sweet peace of the heaven which men strive for must need be more earnest than others are speed when they loiter persist where they cease twelve you know how one angel smiles there then courage tis easy for you to be drawn by a single gold hair of that curl from earth's storm and despair to the safe place above us adieu end of poem this recording is in the public domain a question by elizabeth barrett browning read for LibriVox.org by christine g do you think of me as i think of you it seemed not much to ask as i of you we all do ask the same no eyelids cover within the meekest eyes that question over and little in the world the loving do but sit among the rocks and listened for the echo of their own love evermore do you think of me as i think of you do you think of me as i think of you o oh, friends o oh, kindred o oh, dear brotherhood of all the world what are we that we should for covenants of long affection sue why press so near each other when the touch is barred by graves not much and yet too much is this think of me as i think of you but while on mortal lips i shape anew a sigh to mortal issues verily above the unshaken stars that see us die a vocal pathos rolls and he who drew all life from dust and for all tasted death 
by death and life and love appealing saith do you think of me as i think of you end of poem this recording is in the public domain a flower in a letter by elizabeth barrett browning recorded for librivox.org by beth thomas my lonely chamber next the sea is full of many flowers set free by summer's earliest duty dear friends upon the garden walk might stop amid their fondest talk to pull the least in beauty a thousand flowers each seeming one that learnt by gazing on the sun to counterfeit his shining within whose leaves the holy dew that falls from heaven hath won anew a glory in declining red roses used to praises long contented with a poet's song the nightingales being over and lilies white prepared to touch the whitest thought nor soil it much of dreamer turned to lover deep violets you liken to the kindest eyes that look on you without a thought disloyal and cactuses a queen might don if weary of a golden crown and still appear as royal pansies for ladies all i wis that none who wear such brooches miss a jewel in the mirror and tulips children love to stretch their fingers down to feel in each its beauty's secret nearer love's language may be talked with these to work out choicest sentences no blossoms can be meeter and such being used in eastern bowers young maids may wonder if the flowers or meanings be the sweeter and such being strewn before a bride her little foot may turn aside their longer bloom decreeing unless some voices whispered sound should make her gaze upon the ground too earnestly for seeing and being such scattered on a grave whoever mourneth there may have a type that seemeth worthy of a fair body hid below which bloomed on earth a time ago then perished as the earthy and such being wreathed for worldly feast across the brimming cup some guests their rainbow colours viewing may feel them with a silent start the covenant his childish heart with nature made renewing end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain calls of the heart by elizabeth barrett browning recorded for librivox.org by beth thomas free heart that singest to-day like a bird on the first green spray wilt thou go forth to the world where the hawk hath his wing unfurled to follow perhaps thy way where the tamer thine own will bind and to make thee sing will blind while the little hip grows for the free behind heart wilt thou go no no free hearts are better so the world hast thou heard it told has counted its robber gold and the pieces stick to the hand the world goes riding it fair and grand while the truth is bought and sold world voice east world voices west they call thee heart from thine early rest come hither come hither and be our guest heart wilt thou go no no good hearts are calmer so who calleth thee heart world's strife with a golden heft to his knife world's mirth with a finger fine that draws on a board in wine her blood-red plans of life world's gain with a brow knit down world's fame with a laurel crown which rustles most as the leaves turn brown heart wilt thou go no no calm hearts are wiser so hast heard that prosperina once fooling was snatched away to partake the dark king's seat and that the tears ran fast on her feet to think how the sun shone yesterday with her ankles sunken in asphodel she wept for the roses of earth which fell from her lap when the wild car drave to hell heart wilt thou go no no wise hearts are warmer so and what is this place not seen where hearts may hide serene tis a fair still house well kept which humble thoughts have swept and holy prayers made clean there i sit with love in the sun and we two never have done singing sweeter songs than are guessed by one heart wilt thou go no no warm hearts are fuller so o oh heart o oh love i fear that love may be kept too near hast heard o oh heart that tale 
how love may be false and frail to a heart once holden dear but this true love of mine clings fast as the clinging vine and mingles pure as the grapes in wine heart wilt thou go no no full hearts beat higher so o heart o love beware look up and boast not there for who has twirled at the pin tis the world between death and sin the world and the world's despair and death has quickened his pace to the hearth with a mocking face familiar as love in love's own place heart wilt thou go still no high hearts must grieve even so the house is waste to-day the leaf has dropped from the spray the thorn pricked through to the song if summer doeth no wrong the winter will they say sing heart what heart replies in vain we were calm and wise if the tears unkissed stand on in our eyes heart wilt thou go ah no grieved hearts must break even so howbeit all is not lost the warm noon ends in frost and worldly tongues of promise like sheep bells die off from us on the desert hills cloud crossed yet through the silent shall pierce the death angel's call and come up hither recover all heart wilt thou go i go broken hearts triumph so end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain a man's requirements by elizabeth barrett browning Read for LibriVox.org by Christine G. 1. Love me, sweet, with all thou art, Feeling, thinking, seeing, Love me in the lightest parts, Love me in full being. 2. Love me with thine open youth, In its frank surrender, With the vowing of thy mouth, With its silence tender. 3. Love me with thine azure eyes, made for earnest granting, taking colour from the skies, can heaven's truth be wanting? 4. Love me with their lids that fall, snow-like at first meeting, love me with thine heart that all, the neighbours then see beating. 5. Love me with thine hand stretched out, freely open-minded, love me with thy loitering foot, hearing one behind it. 6. Love me with thy voice that turns, sudden faint above me. Love me with thy blush that burns, when I murmur, love me. 7. Love me with thy thinking soul, break it to love sighing. Love me with thy thoughts that roll, on through living, dying. 8. Love me in thy gorgeous airs, when the world has crowned thee. Love me kneeling at thy prayers, with the angels round thee. 9. Love me pure, as muses do, up the woodlands shady. Love me gaily, fast and true, as a winsome lady. 10. Through all hopes that keep us brave, further off or nigher, Love me for the house and grave, and for something higher. 11. Thus, if thou wilt prove me, dear, woman's love no fable, I will love thee half a year, as a man is able. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Wisdom Unapplied by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, read for LibriVox.org, by Christine G. 1. If I were thou, O oh butterfly, and poised my purple wings to spy the sweetest flowers that live and die. 2. I would not waste my strength on those, as thou, for summer hath a close, and pansies bloom not in the snows. 3. If I were thou, O working bee, and all that honey gold I see could delve from roses easily. 4. I would not hive it at a man's door, as thou, that heirdom of my store, should make him rich and leave me poor. 5. 
if i were thou o eagle proud and screamed the thunder back aloud and faced the lightning from the cloud six i would not build my airy throne as thou upon a crumbling stone which the next storm may trample down seven if i were thou o gallant steed with pawing hoof and dancing head and i outrunning thine own speed eight i would not meeken to the rain as thou nor smooth my nostrils plain from the glad deserts snort and strain nine if i were thou red-breasted bird whose songs at shut-up window heard like love's sweet yes to long deferred ten i would not overstay delight as thou but take a swallow flight till the new spring returned to sight eleven while yet i spake a touch was laid upon my brow whose pride did fade as thus methought an angel said twelve if i were thou who singst this song most wise for others and most strong in seeing right while doing wrong thirteen i would not waste my cares and choose as thou to seek what thou must lose such gains as perish in the use fourteen i would not work where none can win as thou half way twixt grief and sin but look above and judge within fifteen i would not let my pulse beat high as thou towards fame's regality nor yet in love's great jeopardy sixteen i would not champ the hard cold bit as thou of what the world thinks fit but take god's freedom using it seventeen i would not play earth's winter out as thou but gird my soul about and live for life past death and doubt eighteen then sing o singer but allow beast fly and bird called foolish now are wise for all thy scorn as thou end of poem this recording is in the public domain insufficiency by elizabeth barrett browning read for LibriVox.org by beth thomas there is no one beside thee and no one above thee thou standest alone as the nightingale sings yet my words that would praise thee are impotent things for none can express thee though all should approve thee i love thee so dear that i only can love thee say what can i do for thee weary thee grieve thee lean on thy shoulder new burdens to add weep my tears over thee making thee sad o oh, hold me not love me not let me retrieve thee i love thee so dear that i only can leave thee end of poem this librivox recording is in the public domain a valediction by elizabeth barrett browning read for librivox.org by beth thomas god be with thee my beloved god be with thee else alone thou goest forth thy face unto the north more and pleasance all around thee and beneath thee looking equal in one snow while i who try to reach thee vainly follow vainly follow with the farewell and the hollow and cannot reach thee so alas i can but teach thee god be with thee my beloved god be with thee can i teach thee my beloved can i teach thee if i said go left or right the counsel would be light the wisdom poor of all that could enrich thee my right would show like left my raising would depress thee of way would leave behind thee of end would leave bereft alas i can but bless thee may god teach thee my beloved may god teach thee can i bless thee my beloved can i bless thee what blessing word can i 
from mine own tears keep dry what flowers grow in my field wherewith to dress thee my good reverts to ill my calmnesses would move thee my softnesses would prick thee my bindings up would break thee my crownings curse and kill alas i can but love thee may god bless thee my beloved may god bless thee can i love thee my beloved can i love thee and is this like love to stand with no help in my hand when strong as death i fain would watch above thee my love kiss can deny no tears that fall beneath it mine oath of love can swear thee from no ill that comes near thee and thou diest while i breathe it and i i can but die may god love thee my beloved May God love thee. End of poem. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. End of From Queen's Gardens by Elizabeth Barrett Browning.